AP will do it wrong, so we're here to do it right. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you our week three Gridiron Expert Top 25 poll. Our own official set of rankings produced right here at the channel. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Make sure to check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. We are already hard at work on our week three college football picks. We went eight and two against the spread this last week. You do not want to miss out on that, beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last five years, and a guaranteed winning record, money right back in your pocket, and the best customer service that any handicapper in the country can give you. Go sign up for those today, again, over at thegridonexpert.com. Check out our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round, and send us some gear to the mailing address down in the description. We'd love to get some more top 25 caliber teams in our background, especially on this shelf for these helmets. So again, our mailing address down in the description so we can represent your team in every single Gridiron Expert video. Well, let's go ahead and dive into it, guys. We told you that week two was going to be phenomenal. It was phenomenal. We saw four ranked teams go down, and a few teams actually did drop out of our top 25. Wisconsin ranked 17th, Tulane ranked 21st. Both dropped out along with Clemson and Arkansas. Clemson 24th, Arkansas 25th. Those four teams dropping out of our top 25. We'll go ahead and break down every team here. As you can see, we'll start in the top 10. The first three teams remain unchanged. To me, the top three teams should not change. Georgia, Michigan, Florida State all taking easy care of business of their opponents. Georgia taking down Ball State. Michigan against UNLV. Florida State dropping 66 points against Southern Miss. So the top three for us remains unchanged. But number four... That's where things get interesting. That's where we have our first major change. The biggest riser in our rankings, Texas, rising nine spots from 13th to 4th after their big-time 10-point victory on the road at then number 3 Alabama. The Longhorns were phenomenal. Nearly 350 passing yards from Quinn Ewers. They forced two crucial interceptions off of Jalen Milrow that led to 10 Texas points, and they won the game by 10 points. And they did it at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Did it in Tuscaloosa. Texas looked phenomenal. The defense was phenomenal. The offense was moving at an unbelievable pace. Alabama had no answer for them. Give a lot of credit to Steve Sarkeesian and the Longhorns. I'm not going to go out there and say they're back just yet, but they're looking pretty dang good. Texas is a legitimate playoff contender and right now, arguably, had the most impressive victory out of any team in the country. So Texas up to number four. If the playoff were to happen today, we would have Texas in it. Underneath them, Penn State rising a spot, beating Delaware 63-7. No big changes there, obviously moving up because of the loss of Alabama. USC up two spots after their big-time defeat over Stanford, scoring 49 points in the first half. I don't care who you're playing, how good they are, how bad they are. 49 points in one half is unbelievable. Big-time conference win for Lincoln Riley and the Trojans. They're up to number six. Ohio State down to number seven. And we see some movement here. Ohio State at seven, Washington down to 10. This is not because these teams necessarily played bad, although I will say I've been relatively unimpressed with Ohio State these last two weeks. Uh, you know, not a very impressive performance against Indiana. Not the most impressive performance against Youngstown State either, only winning that game 35-7. to seven. But Ohio State dropping a few spots, Washington dropping a few spots, is not really because they're being punished. It's because of what happened with other teams. Obviously, Texas moving up is going to bump a few people down. And then we have Oregon and Notre Dame here, both coming off big-time road victories that were just a little bit more impressive than what Washington did. So again, it's not because Washington's being punished. Not that they lost to Tulsa. Not that they looked bad against Tulsa. But Oregon going on the road and beating Texas Tech 38-30. to And Notre Dame getting a 21-point victory over NC State, to me, was enough to justify both them rising a few spots in the rankings, jumping a team like Washington, who only beat Boise State, who's now 0-2 following their home loss to UCF, and then a bad Tulsa team as well. So that will complete their top 10. All these teams are top 10 caliber. It's going to continue to shift and see a lot of movement over the next couple of weeks, especially as we get into conference play and have more top 25 matchups. But big-time win for Oregon, big-time win for Notre Dame, big-time win for Washington being Tulsa by 43, but the Huskies down a couple spots to number 10. Over here in our second column, not a whole lot of changes. Utah, Tennessee, LSU, Oregon State, Kansas State all remain unchanged. Utah getting a big win over Baylor with their backup quarterback, Cam Rising, still not back yet, winning maybe one of the wildest endings of the week, taking down Baylor 20-13, to didn't score a touchdown all game long, and then scored two in the final two minutes. The Utes, not enough to crack the top 10, though. The only top 10 team we saw that the lose was Alabama. They are down to number 13, as you can see, losing to Texas by 10 points. Some would say that's a little bit 
harsh, but the Crimson Tide didn't look that good. Jalen Milrow made a lot of costly mistakes. Alabama's offensive line was not good. Milrow was constantly under duress, constantly under pressure. The offense not performing it the way we thought. The defense couldn't stop Texas to save their lives. 34 points on their home turf. Bama dropping nine spots. Actually, for us, Texas and Alabama swapping spots. That wasn't by design. Just kind of how it played out. Texas up to four. Alabama down from four to number 13. Again, we said Utah did not crack the top 10 yet because the only team that lost was Alabama and a team like Texas ended up surging in. So Utah, unfortunately, despite the big win at Baylor, staying put at number 11. Tennessee staying put at 12 following their unimpressive performance against Austin P. only winning 30 to 13. Really struggled quite a bit throughout that game. It was very interesting to see uh, Tennessee not being able to really pull away as the game wore on. But the Volunteers still an elite team, still an elite offense coming in at number 12. Still above Alabama. Volunteers 2-0, Alabama one and one, as we know. LSU 14, Oregon State 15, Kansas State 16, LSU beating Grambling 72 to 10, Oregon State defeating UC Davis 55 to 7, Kansas State getting a big win over Troy. There was no massive group of five upset in Manhattan this year. Remember, Kansas State lost to Tulane last year at home. Many thought Troy could be a trendy upset pick. The Wildcats crushed that pretty quickly, dominating from start to finish, winning 42 to 13. Those three teams, again, remaining unchanged in our rankings. Duke rising up two spots, again, because some of the teams that lost or moved ahead of them. Texas rising up, Wisconsin falling out. Duke moving up two spots after a 35-point victory over Lafayette. And again, that benefits because of the Wisconsin loss to Washington State and North Carolina not playing well against App State. And we'll get to that in a second. But Duke up two spots. Colorado, excuse me, Ole Miss up two spots following their 17-point victory over Tulane without Michael Pratt in a game that was a lot closer than 17 points would show. The game was a 17-point victory in the end, but keep in mind that Ole Miss benefited from a beneficial false start on their end that gave them the opportunity to kick a 56-yard field goal to go up 10, then got that strip stack, sack fumble recovery for a touchdown that led to that 17-point victory. But it was a one-possession game late in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss coming alive in those final few minutes to close it out. But the Rebels, nonetheless, big win into the top 20, rising up two spots to number 18. And then we have two newcomers into our rankings, Colorado and Miami. A lot of people asked us last week, where's Colorado? Why didn't you rank Colorado? They just beat TCU. Why aren't they in there? And I said, well, let's pump the brakes a little bit. It was an impressive victory, 100%. But I can't justify throwing Colorado into the top 20 or anything after one victory over TCU. But after what we saw against Nebraska... It is very evident, obviously, that Colorado is a top 25 team, and for us, a top 25 team. The offense is unbelievable. So much speed, so much talent, led by Shadur Sanders, of course, the son of Deion Sanders. They took that Nebraska game personally, and it showed. Both teams struggling out the gate. Colorado, the one waking up, though, forcing turnover after turnover after turnover and mistake after mistake after mistake against Jeff Sims and the Cornhuskers, busting it open with a 10-0 lead, never looked back, winning 36-14, to and College Game Day now coming to Boulder this Saturday as Colorado takes on Colorado State. And again, it just comes to show the effect, the prime effect that Deion Sanders has had, not just at Colorado, but in the whole world of college football. An unbelievable turnaround, an unbelievable story, and the Buffaloes continue to roll. They're up to number 19. Miami cracking the top 25, actually cracking the top 20 after their 15-point victory over then number 23 Texas A&M, a big time victory for the Hurricanes, the signature victory as of now that Mario Cristobal needed at the U. They needed that. They needed it bad. We said the winner of that game was going to set the tone for the rest of their season. Miami is setting the tone. They got the massive victory. A&M disappointing once again. But Miami looked phenomenal. Tyler Van Dyke five passing touchdowns in that game. Miami outscored Texas A&M 51 or excuse me, 41 to 16 over the final 41 minutes of play. They just lit them up from start to finish after that slow start. Miami cracking the top 20, looking really, really good. And what now seems to be a relatively wide open ACC. Clemson hasn't looked good. Pittsburgh lost to Cincinnati. North Carolina struggled against App State. The Tar Heels now coming in at number 22, dropping four spots. It's crazy how college football works, right? You know, North Carolina looks phenomenal against South Carolina. Has, what, like nine sacks in that game. The defense looks so much more improved. They face an App State team with a lot of young, new pieces that didn't even look good in week one against Gardner-Webb. And then North Carolina comes out and has to go to double overtime against the Mountaineers. 40-34 to victory. Tar Heels got the win, but still allowed nearly 500 yards of offense. Didn't register a single sack in the game. What happened? 
what happened between week one and week two defensively for North Carolina. Still some concerns on that side of the ball, but App State and UNC providing yet another classic just like they did in the season opener last year. But because of the struggle, North Carolina dropping a handful of spots down to 22. Iowa moving up a few spots, up one actually, after their win over Iowa State, winning the Cy Hawk Trophy beating Iowa State 20-13 to in another game that's a little bit closer uh, than the score would show. Iowa State scoring a late touchdown. Had an opportunity to go down there and tie it. I will give them that. Had an opportunity to go tie the game, but Iowa was really in control of this game from start to finish. Got a massive victory behind the strength of their defense and an offense that finally is starting to groove a little bit. 20 points isn't a lot, but hey, it's more than they had last year. Nearly triple the amount of points they had last year when they faced Iowa State. So Iowa moving up a spot number 21. Kept them in our top 25, unlike the AP poll did last week. Number 23, Washington State comes in after their big win over Wisconsin. Second year in a row that Jake Dickert's team has defeated the Badgers, and they did so in Pullman, 31-22, to with an unbelievable defensive performance, forcing like three or four turnovers, had a touchdown, defensive touchdown in there. Cam Ward, that passing attack is very, very electric. Watch out for Washington State. Watch out for the Pac-12 period. I mean, you look at this, guys. You've got USC. You've got Oregon. You've got Washington. You've got Utah. Oregon State. Colorado. Washington State. And now UCLA. This is an elite conference. To me right now, the Pac-12 is the best conference in all of college football. And that has continued to show, not just in Week 1, but also in Week 2. A massive victory for the Cougars, who you do not need to sleep on. They crack our top 25. Oklahoma drops a spot after their mediocre win over SMU, 28-11. to Sooners still have a lot of questions they need answered. Have not been playing nearly as well as we thought they would do, although beating A-State, 73 nothing in Week 1 was a good start to the year. And then UCLA cracking our top 25 with an impressive road victory over San Diego State, 35-10. Typically a strong defensive team. The Aztecs had no answer for Chip Kelly's offense. 35-10 win, beat Coastal Carolina, solid team out of the Sun Belt, now beat San Diego State. UCLA was right on the outside looking in for us last week. They rise up in the number 25 after disappointing performances from Clemson and Arkansas, again, both of which fell out of the rankings. So there you go, guys. There's our week three GE top 25. Leave your rankings and your thoughts down in the comments below. We've got a massive weekend of college football coming up. These rankings will look drastically different when we do this video again next Monday. But let us know what you think. It's wild how things are taking shape, right? Texas now into the top four. Penn State up to number five. Up number five. The Pac-12 loaded with ranked teams. Alabama outside the top ten. It feels weird having them in the second column, not in the first column. And we're only two weeks into the season. Things are only going to get crazier from here. Again, guys, that is the beauty of college football. So once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on the website, thegridironexpert.com, our Patreon account, our mailing address to send us some of your team's gear to be represented in every single Gridiron Expert video. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah.